the hour, I was discussing a little bit about the amount of designations that are possible. And we all know one person in our office who has spent the last five or ten years going after every piece of education without any real-world experience other than just going after all the letters after their name. But now you end up with real estate agents who are teaming up to bring a lot of designations and a lot of real-world experience to the table all on behalf of, I guess, one customer, one client. Why do you see that happening more and more? I think that our industry has been very slow to understand that, you know, if you owned a restaurant, you would not buy the groceries, haul them in, um, then, you know, wash the dishes, set the tables, cook the food, and take the orders. No one would do that. That would be crazy. Mm -hmm. That's just too much work. We all know that agents have a reputation of being available 24-7, and that's always that's never going to change. But if you're able to form a team in which um, one person maybe feels very comfortable in front of people and another one of the partners in the group feels more comfortable um, helping people prepare houses um, like Stephen was talking about, that's just they have some background in design and and they like that marketing piece of it, mm -hmm. preparing a house for the market and getting the market pieces ready, meeting with a photographer. So you have one person that can sit down at the kitchen table um, and then another person who can come in right after and has maybe a designation or some background or a degree in design. Mm -hmm. And so you're adding value and you're teaming up and you're cutting the work in half. Another person on the team might be a, uh, an administrator, an administrative assistant that just handles the paperwork because they're good at paperwork. I can price the heck out of a house. I, can, I know how to market it. Um, I know how to communicate to people what they need to do or what services I have for them and why to choose me over someone else. And I'm excellent at negotiating, but I cannot uh, deal with paperwork. It just baffles me. Copy machines, any kind of machinery or computers <laughs> or scanning or e all that stuff slows me way down mm -hmm. and, and pulls me down. So if I have someone to pick that up off of me, right. then I'm going to be more productive and I'm more than willing to share um, my income amongst partners in my group. And so we all contribute our special um, skills set and um, nobody's shopping for the groceries, cooking the food. Um, and frying it up in a pan and and cleaning up afterwards. So a lot of this has, comes down. I mean, it's this hyper special specialization, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can only be so good at so many different things. And it, as you said, if you try to do all, be all things to all people, right. you're really like only maybe kind of good at all of them yeah. versus having a team approach, which is you know really good for everybody. Service increases for your your clientele when you are able to add value of people who are do are better at doing things than I am. I can't often, very often in our um, industry, things be, go from something that is on a to-do list to a red-hot urgency. and Or it may not be real important to us, but for our seller right now, that one thing like um, not having enough flyers in the flyer box or suddenly not showing up on Zillow mysteriously – they want to know why and they want it taken care of now. And if I'm sitting down with the Joneses and the Smiths need something, uh, Smiths are going to have to wait. If I have an administrator there from 9 to 5, 9 to 6, whatever, to, to, to help them or to answer my emails when I can't be there to do it, and it helps on the um, incoming business side by um, having someone available to get right back to any potential business that comes our way. Because I'm telling you, if they... If a potential client reaches out to me, even if they're referred by someone I've done tons of business with, I only have a window of maybe 24 hours, probably less, more like 12, to get back to them or they're on to the next person. Mm -hmm. So they don't really care if it's me that gets back to them and say, to say, uh, Dawn's available to meet with you these times of the day. Pick <clears> one. <throat> they just want to, they've got a busy life too. They want to reach out. Get, get their this, questions answered. Yeah, get 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 a, something scheduled and then know that I'm going to show up. Yeah, in fact, I believe one of the, the top reasons that people choose a real estate agent to work with is accessibility. Yes. It's not about, I want to sell your house for the highest price. It's, can I just talk to these people at the, the exact moment that mm -hmm. I need them? Yep, it is important to them. But they also, and I know that down deep they realize that we are human beings and sometimes we take showers. <laughs> if, you dig, if you dig real, real deep. <laughs> <laughs> we take showers and we have children and we have lives. And um, somehow I was able to knit raising 
three children in with my life um, and, and being a single mom and everything. But uh, it was pretty crazy, and um, um, it was it, it, I was very fortunate that I did my business very close to where I lived and where my kids went to school and that I had parents that were really willing to help. But I'm getting older now, and I'm finding that it's okay to delegate and that I can increase my ability to serve my clients if I bring on people to help me. And uh, I have a buyer's agent now, for instance, and she is – in this market, when we know that it's very it's becoming more and more difficult to find the house, any house, uh, and, and very important, everyone, no one wants just a house, they want the right house for them, you have to be really quick. And if I'm, again, with the Smiths, talking to them about selling their grandmother's house in their, with my, their cat in my lap or whatever for two hours, I cannot <laughs> I can be only in imagine front of my you computer. with a cat in, the, in your lap. And a dog, you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> Kid crying chewing on my shoe, and yeah, it's and that and that's what I love about this industry, and I wouldn't do it any other way. But the point is, is that then then at so I'm there between two and four, and at two fifteen, the perfect house for the Thomases pops up. Now, who's going to get them to that house? My buyer's agent is, or our administrator, who's also all day long screening for listings and then texting us. All of us, mass text, who's ready because the perfect house for the Thomases came up. Mm -hmm. Let's get out there and at least preview it for ourselves, see how which one of them we can get here fastest. I mean, it's it's gorilla out there for finding buyers' homes. So, and my buyer's agent, she has endless amounts of patience. Um, she knows the market. She's out there all day, every day, and it's what she does best. And although I, I love working with buyers and I'm good at it, uh, I find that I sometimes worry that if I'm going to take a buyer who has asked to work with me and put them with my buyer's agent, they might think they're getting second teamed. But it takes 30 minutes with Jessica, and they're fine. I, I never hear from them again, except maybe a thank you card when it's when it's all over. And, and we'll communicate, and I will sometimes when Jessica's off with another buyer conducting an inspection, I'll show up at the inspection. If they know that I'm still there and that we are a team um, – it, it reflects well on all of us, and it takes nothing away from me at all or my reputation or the amount of referrals that I get. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, and I think it's interesting when some people, because we see it from the mortgage side. We have a team, mm -hmm. and it's like, well, I want to talk to so-and-so. Like, right. I want to I talk to Ben. I want to talk to Ryan. And a lot of times, like, well, A, you don't need to talk to that person, right? right. In fact, oftentimes the leader of the team, in your case, you or any mm -hmm. type of real estate agent who has a team, isn't even the best person to talk to about a certain intricacy of your transaction. Absolutely. Because you can't, like you said, you can't do it mm -hmm. all. And as real estate contracts, as real estate deals get more and more complex and mm -hmm. there's more paperwork involved, yeah. it would be all, I mean, it would almost be impossible for somebody to be really successful and also really uh, in tune with every minute detail right. that's going on, not because they don't want to be, mm -hmm. but because it's just a hyper-specialized market. You might be great at staging. You might be right. great at negotiation. You might mm -hmm. be great at pricing. But as you said, I mean, I can't touch paperwork. If I have three pieces of paper yeah. in front of me, they're out of order within 30 seconds. Yeah. And then I'm like, I don't even know. And it, there could be a yellow line. This is just sign this right, right. here. And I'm up in arms, probably similar to you. Yeah, oh, yeah, and I'll find them <clears throat> stuck to the bottom of my shoe. And, and we're trying to go paperless. That's the goal. But even that is uh, – it, it's hard, and it's, there's a learning curve for me. But I have people around me that make sure that notices get delivered, that uh, whatever work that was promised gets done, that the receipts are delivered to the other party. There's so many details. There's so many things that can go wrong. I liken it to a pregnancy. You, you're out – looking for a house, it's so, so exciting, and, um, you know, there's a lot of effort that goes into it, and then all of a sudden, we're pregnant, or we have a house. And then there's the waiting. <laughs> no, no, follow me, just okay, follow me. Okay, I'm with this. you, I'm okay, with you. and there's the waiting, and it gets kind of boring, and it gets kind of annoying, and, you know, there's just not, not a lot going on. And then there's a whole bunch of excitement right at the end where a lot of things could go wrong, and you really hope that they, and then it all comes out in the end, and it all happens, <laughs> and, the, and the baby's born, or the house is closed. I like this analogy. People get I it. like it, too. I get it. I get it. And now you have this beautiful baby, and you're oh so proud, right? 
But it is. It's, it takes some time, and it there's some boring parts in the middle. But while they're being born, we're like uh, taking temperatures and and uh, doing ultrasounds on, on the house and on the paperwork. Sure, sure. Do you I understand. understand where I'm going? Okay. So, you know, it's uh, it is very complicated. It's getting more complicated every day. And I've been around for you know decades watching this. We went from when I started many years ago. It was one page that was, you know, the multiple copies. Where you, can you remember this, Ben, where you'd write and it'd be, you'd tear off the Carbon duplicate. paper. There you go. Carbon paper. So, so it, it was one legal length of um, paper. It was carbon copies and it was printed on the back side. Now, an average real estate contract is about 27 pages long. And that's not including all five pages of the disclosure that you have to give them or any of the advisories or the agency disclosure brochures. There's a lot of paperwork. And there's a lo- even car- carbon monoxide alarms are required in houses now. Sellers have to know this. Um, somebody's got to tell them. It's not our responsibility to make sure it's in the house, but the seller has to know or they're in violation. And so there's so many details, so many things to be remembered. And when a good agent um, is juggling 15 or 20 transactions in escrow at pretty much all times, I think people lose sight that you that um, they are not your only client, but they should. I want them to think that they are my only client. And I, I, I want to know that when I get them on the phone um, or their email comes in at 945 at night, that I can get back to them and let them make them think that I was waiting for that email or that I have all the time in the world to talk to them on the phone. And I can only do that if I know that I have other people on my team spinning plates for me and my clients to make sure that nothing falls through the crack and that baby gets delivered healthy. Yeah, I, mean, you're, I love it. Okay, I love the analogy, Don. It, make, okay. it makes a lot of sense. I mean, we just had a baby <laughs> on Friday. Like, what? Yeah. Oh. I figured that's why you were bringing it up. Oh, but then you no. said you t- yeah. No, no, I knew that. No, Heather yeah, told me. Yeah, a little I, baby I girl on Friday. So I, I, I got the whole visual from top to bottom. From top to bottom, okay. Yeah, from your whole story. It makes a lot of sense. I it mean, is. when it, and then you end up in a position where you're like, okay, great, we got the house, and then what's next? Yes. And then there's so many details. Let's talk a little bit more about that when we come back. What happens after you actually get the house? 